Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Rubber Industry News Hour. It's a technology-based initiative. Uh, for the benefit of everyone, uh, before going to the program, uh, I'm going to run the video on the technology so that you understand about what is technology, what kind of activities are we are doing uh, for the sake of the people that are new to the program. Uh, if you already know about it, it's fine. Please look at it and watch it again, please.
Okay, that's about the techno base. I'm hoping that you, you know, the, find it, uh, you know, relevant to your work, uh, what kind of activities we are doing. Um, so it'll give you some idea um, what kind of services we are offering for the industry in terms of the knowledge, in terms of the business consulting and the business development services. Um, so we are all here for the rubber industry news hour. It's a, a weekly news program focusing on the trends in the rubber and tire industries every Monday. So first of all, I'd like to convince and say thanks to your supporting uh, media on the rubber world. I encourage you to be the member of the rubber world. Uh, it is a free subscription for the digital edition. Go to their website, rubberworld.com. Please subscribe it. You get a, a monthly magazine. And uh, it's a very useful magazine with the technical information. The other, other magazine is a bi-monthly. It is a rubber and tire digest. It is jointly published by Technobase and Rubber World. Uh, you can also subscribe for it. Uh, again, the website is rubbertiredigest.com. Um, digital, digital additional magazine is free to subscribe. We do so. Okay, and we are here for the episode number three. Today is the 31st January, Monday. Uh, every every Monday, we're doing this program at the same time. I welcome you all for this uh, rubber industry news server. The, just give you some idea what are the contents we are trying to focus. Okay, you, we may not get every week completely on this, but uh, we are trying our best to give you the, what are the trends in the business, technology trends, research trends, and also the market review, natural rubber market review, and for the technical people, some tips and tricks related to the rubber processing and jobs. We also introduce in the buyer guide and also opportunity to, to market uh, branding your companies. So it's a multifaceted program, with the news, ideas, market information. So it's all packed together. Every week, try, every week we'll be covering as much as possible in uh, in, in, in proper way on the trends in the rubber industry. Uh, as part of this uh, news program, news hour, uh, we have uh, our guest from uh, expert, it's Mr. Joom Jacob, he's a rubber industry analyst. He will be discussing the natural rubber industry market review. He will be joined every week uh, with giving the information on price, supply and demand issues and market changes in the natural rubber industry. Today we have an expert, uh, Mr. Pranab Bhattacharya, he is an experienced rubber technologist. Um, he'll be giving a, a take care of the tips and uh, tricks uh, session today. And so let's get to the uh, the trends. What, I'll be addressing it briefly. What are the trends today in, in the rubber industry? Um, I'll give you briefly, one by one, various news. First is, news is about the Kumho tire investment in Saudi Arabia. I just want to highlight here because the in Middle East also, in Arab countries also, the tire industries are growing and the recently in the, at the sea. Saudi South Korean Business Forum, Kumho Tire has signed a MOU with the Black Arrow Tire Company to establish a tire manufacturing in Saudi Arabia. That's the news uh, about the tire industry. Uh, this is for the footwear industry people. Um, just give you, the, I think footwear people not only rubber, they also use the PU. This is a real the PU. Huntsman is one of the popular polythene suppliers. They develop bio-based polyurethane for the keen plant based soles. Foot, footwear experts at Huntsman have developed the, but they help the keen to develop a breakthrough production innovation, a range of sneakers with plant based soles. It's called the Field to Foot F2F sneakers, were created by Keen Advanced Concept Team, utilizing a specially developed bio based polyurethane system from Huntsman that contains a byproduct from agriculture processing. This biopolythene content uh, it has a bio content from 35 to 51 percent. It has a low carbon footprint than petroleum based alternatives that are readily available and currently the norm in footwear production. Developed by Footwear uh, Huntsman Footwear Center in Belgium, the system which is based on Huntsman Daltropet polyurethane technology platform is a soling solution created especially for Keen. The direct on system offers keen comparable performance to conventional systems when it con comes to the resilience, rebound, hydrolysis, comfort, and durability. But crucially, it is fully aligned with 
brand's commitment to incorporating clean, environmentally focused, high performance technology into its footwear. And that's a, a news about the Huntsman development related to the bio based polyurethane for sneakers. Keen is a company, pretty company, producing the sneakers. There's a news about the General Motors. Um, I think we all heard a lot about the EV vehicles. So this is about General Motors investment in EV, uh, probably in $7 billion with the four new factories in Michigan. They announced investment uh, in, in four manufacturing facilities in Michigan, creating 4,000 new jobs and retaining 1,000, um, and significantly increasing the battery cell and electric truck manufacturing capacity. This is the single largest investment announcement in GM history. The investment includes construction of a new Ultium cells battery cells plant in Lansing and conversion of GM's assembly plant in Orion Township in Michigan for production of Chowlet uh, EV and electric GMC Sierra. GM's the second assembly plant scheduled to build full size electric pickups. These investments are the latest step toward accelerating GM's drive to become the EV market leader in North America by 2025. The Orion and LTM sales investments will support an increase in total full-size electric truck production capacity to 600,000 trucks when both factory Giro and Orion facilities are fully ramped. GM has been the leader in U.S. full-size truck deliveries over the past two years. In addition, the company is investing in its uh, to Lansing area vehicle assembly plant for near-term product enhancement. That's the news about the GM's investment in electric vehicles. The other one is I have is uh, Instron. Probably near, most of you know Instron. They have the universal test systems. Um, they are introducing the new series, uh, 3,400 and 6,800 series building on a 75 legacy of excellence in mechanical testing instronet announces the capacity expansion of the 3400 and the 6800 series universal test systems these series have high force universal system or successors to instron instrons the popular 3300 and 5900 series systems and are now available in force capacities ranging up to 300 kn with higher capacities come the host of new futures uh, focused on durability, ergonomics, and uh, simplifying mechanical testing. So if you are interested in the um, uh, new models from the Instron uh, 3400 series and uh, 6800 series, please check with them. There's a new development from the Instron on the equipment. I'd like to introduce that, you know, the First of all, congratulate um, the newly elected team of the IRI, Indian Rubber Institute. Um, as you know, in, Indian Rubber Institute is a professional body of the rubber technologies based in India. Um, Dr. Samar Bandhapadhyaya is unanimously elected as honorary secretary for the IRI Governing Council, along with Mr. Jayamani. He is the chairman for the Education Committee. Both are unanimously elected as the team members of the IRI. Uh, Indian Rubber Institute, one is um, Dr. Samar and uh, Mr. Jayamani. Uh, congratulations to them, both of them. So let's we get into the market review. Um, so let's invite um, Mr. Joan Jacob uh, to present the news on the rubber industry market review. So Joan, please. Welcome to the NR Market Review. To begin with, let us have a, a review of what was our short-term outlook presented last Monday. So last week, our observations were, one, we were respecting China's less active presence in the physical market ahead of the long holiday for the Lunar New Year or Spring Festival. So we expected China to be less active last week. We also expected speculative traders turning less active 
in the futures due to the risk arising from at least three sources. Number one, the U.S. Federal Reserve potentially going to going for aggressive policy tightening, including an earlier than expected hike in policy interest rates, leading to stronger dollar. We also expected IMF likely to trim its world economic outlook for 2022. We also expected geopolitical tension from possible Russian attack on Ukraine and potential retaliation by the US and its allies in the form of economic sanction. And also we had expected uh, NR prices would be affected by negative factors, various negative factors arising from the above factors. But at the same time, we expected questioning effects from the seasonal short supply of natural rubber. Being said that right now, uh, wintering season has started. So we expected some kind of a cushioning effect means uh, even if price falling down, the price fall will be limited because of the cushioning support from the cushioning effect from the short supply. Also, we expected that latest price uh, performing better during the last week relative to TSR. This is because latest processing companies offer a premium price. Every year they offer a premium price for fresh latex. Uh, this is a strategy to encourage farmers to sell their produce in the form of fresh latex rather than selling in the form of the capillum, in the form of capillum, which is more easier and also uh, which is more convenient for farmers. But to, in, to get enough adequate raw fresh latex, the processing factories every year they give offer a premium price for lattice. So these were our expectations for last week. And what really happened? Just, just we can have a review what happened really in us against what we expected. First of all, TSR price. First, we will discuss the physical market. TSR price. Let us review what happened to the physical market of technically specified natural rubber. Technically specified natural rubber constitutes around 70% of the global production of natural rubber or, or global trade in natural rubber, which is most popular for. Coming to TSR market at Bank of SDR 20, the physical market last week averaged 1.5% lower compared to a week before. 1.5% lower last week. At Kuala Lumpur, SMR 20 market fell. 2.6%. I mean, the average during last week was 2.6% compared, compared to the average a week before. Then coming to latex markets, we have two markets. One is Bangkok and one is Kuala Lumpur. Bangkok market fell only by 0.2%. Just compare that in the Bangkok market, SMR STR20 fell by 1.5%. But lattice price then uh, fell by only 0.2 percent, means almost zero percent. In Kuala Lumpur market, lattice price increased by nominally 0.1 percent, increased nominally. But at the same time, Kuala Lumpur market SMR20 fell by 2.6 percent. SMR20 fell by 2.6 percent Kuala Lumpur market. But the same Kuala Lumpur market itself, lattice price was marginally upward. Then coming to Bangkok market, RSS3, Bangkok market of RSS3, RSS3 market fell by 1.0%. Uh, I mean, the average during last week was 1.0% lower compared to the average a week before. And another ma major market for RSS is Kota market in India. Kota market in India fell by nominally only 0.1% during last week compared to the previous week. What a market actually it was getting support from the uh, the from the demand side because the entire manufacturing sector is uh, getting is a recovering from the fall, is a re recovering and there's a strong recovery. And also we have to consider that India is uh, one among the only uh, India and Japan are the two countries where IMF did not scale down the outlook for economic outlook for 2020. Means uh, economy is uh, growing fast. 
and at the same time tire industry also uh, is picking up so and also the vehicle sector also picking up that means uh, india the demand side is performing well and at the same time india also it is a wintering off season means uh, there's a low season supply season low season uh is a, is a season of low supply so it means the indian market actually still indian market was 0.1 percent lower compared to the previous week then we will come into the futures market what happens to the futures markets shanghai futures market average 4.1 percent lower during last week compared to the previous week compared to a week ago 4.1 percent means uh, the fall in the futures shanghai futures was considerably higher compared to the fall in the physical markets uh, like str20 latex or rss coming to psychom dsr20 average 3.4 percent lower last week compared to a week before psychom markets and also osaka rss3 average 4.4 percent lower last week compared to a week before so all the three futures market went down by three to four percent or in other words the futures market suffered losses uh more losses compared to the physical market due to negative sentiments generated by at least the four factors the four factors which impacted the sentiment in the market are one fear of aggressive policy tightening by the u.s federal reserve so the future u.s federal reserve meet, one meeting of the fomc free open market committee meeting of the u.s federal reserve was there last week and after the meeting uh, the federal reserve chairman announced that federal reserve is going for more aggressive policies and also the federal reserve is considering a rate hike means a higher policy interest rates starting from march so this is a little bit earlier so even before the meeting the market or people in the in the market were expecting such a decision by the federal reserve so the because of the fear of aggressive policy tightening uh the speculative investors in futures market were keeping away from riskier investment policy tightening or higher policy interest rate means dollar is going to be stronger or interest rate is going to be higher dollar is going to be stronger as well as interest rate higher means a borrowing cost is higher both are not good for speculative investors in terms of because that will that will affect their return from the venture then another major issue which impacted which has negative influence on the market sentiment was the which is then geopolitical tension from possible russian attack on ukraine so this is another major important thing important issue uh, possible attack on russian attack on ukraine means it has economic implication because the us and the it allies will be uh, will be uh, what you call putting economic sanction and that is having potential impact on the global economic recovery. Then another major development happened last week was the IMF scaled down the world economic outlook for 2022 by 0.5 percentage points. IMF has scaled down their outlook for China by 1.2 percentage points and also by the US by 0.9 percentage point. So it means um, in the for the major nr consuming countries and region also for the eu region major nr consuming countries and region except india and japan i am must scale down the outlook for uh 2022 having implications on the nr demand outlook for 2022 then another important issue which impacted the sentiment in the market was uh, ahead of the long holiday for the Lunar New Year, speculative traders at the Shanghai markets shortened their position, may sold the position as they pursue risk arising from the factors earlier we mentioned. So many risk factors. So whenever they perceive a risk, normally they will be keeping away or selling out the riskier assets and going for safer investment avenue. So this was the was the uh this was what happened during last week so summarize everything together we can we can say that last week what happened we have seen physical markets 
actually market went down generally speaking market went down both in physical and futures market but the decline was more prominent in the futures market because futures market were weighed down by a set of various negative factors uh, and the negative market sentiment but the physical market uh, it received support cushioning support from the low supply seasonal low supply and also we have seen as predicted rightly predicted lattice price performed better than other dry forms of than dry forms of natural rubber so this was a summary of what happened during last week now looking at what lies ahead uh, during the coming week what can be expected so one important thing we can expect total absence of china that is sure total absence of china from the physical market because china will remain closed until february 7 and shanghai market will resume trading only by february 8 so china is very important because as i mentioned earlier uh, through this particular forum china accounts for 43 percent of the world demand for natural rubber so china's abs total absence in the market is something important for the crucial for the market so number one total absence of china will be severely felt in the market in the coming week or we can say that it will be a dull market major buyer is away from the market with dull markets number two dollar is likely to stay strong uh, in the short term because federal reserve us federal reserve already indicated a rate hike beginning from march and a more aggressive policy tightening measures to tame the inflation so we are expecting uh, dollar to stay strong in the short term dollar staying strong means means the commodities and those people work, trading in natural rubber physical and futures uh, it is more expensive to them more stronger dollar means buying commodities or commodity futures is going to be more expensive so this is a negative factor then third factor which is going to dominate the market sentiment during the coming week is a geopolitical tension uh, that will the, the geopolitical tensions are staying elevated speculative investors uh, normally keep away from uh, riskier asset classes they don't usually they stay away from riskier, riskier asset classes whenever they find some kind of a geopolitical tension uh, because uh, when there's a risk is arising in one particular area what they do normally do they will be leaving riskier as riskier assets and uh, going towards uh, what is called a safe haven assets something like a us dollar or gold something like that so this is uh, having another negative implication going to have a negative implication on commodities in general so geopolitical tension will be a negative factor then another negative factor IMF has already scaled down the global economic outlook for 2022 and that include major NR consuming countries like China, US, European Union. Only Japan and uh, India are the only, are the only two countries uh, among the major NR consuming countries where IMF has slightly scaled up the outlook for 2022. So for the other countries, China, IMF has scaled down the global economic outlook means the demand outlook for natural rubber from these countries including china us and europe is will, will need a corresponding scale now so means uh, expected demand for natural rubber from these countries like U china us european union will be lower than expected earlier this is another negative factor another implication of the im of trimmed global economic outlook implication on the natural rubber demand sector then on the positive side we have to consider that the physical market is likely to get a more support compared to previous week support is going to be more because more countries are actually uh, the seasonal low supply season the seasonal low supply has started in more countries and the more smallholders and the estates have stop the tapping that means uh, the off season of supply is going to be uh, felt a little bit more compared to a week before that means uh, the coming week 
global supply will be lower compared to the previous week and that will be having a positive impact on physical markets so this is uh, going to happen in the fourth week so that means the physical market we have to consider that there is no shanghai market during uh, until february 7 and the psycho market will reopen only on february 3 so that means uh, speculative activities in the it will be less absent next week at the same time that means uh, whatever happening in the geopolitics and all this may not reflect on the market because physical market futures market is especially the shanghai market is closed until february 7 so those things need not reflect on the market but at the same time the physical market will be getting very good support from the short supply so in the short term physical market is likely to get support from the uh, short supply that means the prices can at least marginally improve in the physical markets in the coming week in the physical market in the coming week and uh, that need not be uh, the case if the shanghai market was open because shanghai market is closed so the various negative factors discussed above like a geopolitical tension and uh, those things may not be refer getting reflected in the market and likewise what we have mentioned we expected last week we are expecting latest price to perform better in the coming week in relative to the TSR prices. So we can expect latest price to be better because this is it is seasonal low supply and uh, latest processing factories how to run the business, they how to get the raw raw latex or fresh latex. So they have to encourage farmers to sell the produce in the form of fresh latex. For that they have to offer a premium price. If the premium price is not offered, they'll be selling the produce in the form of capillum, which is easier for farmers and normally, unless there is a premium price, farmers will do that. So we are expecting a better price for uh, price for lattice relative to TSR. So this is all what we are expecting uh, in the natural rubber markets in the coming week. Thank you very much. See you next week, next Monday at the same time. Thank you. Okay, that's about the rubber industry, natural rubber industry report. Thank you, Mr. Jim Jacob. I do encourage all of you to be following you know, our WhatsApp group. Um, and please take a, a minute to scan this QR code so that you get a, you know, every Monday, if you want to join this program, um, you know, I, we don't have a website uh, for this program yet. And so we, we only send by the links by the Facebook or by WhatsApp group. So I encourage you to scan this QR code um, to be part of the rubber network uh, WhatsApp group. Um, not only this program, there are a number of other activities you keep you get updated. So please do so. Okay, this from this episode onwards, I have started this rubber industry buyer guide. What is a buyer guide? So basically, the suppliers of technologies and products services. Um, I have prepared a, a video on the various suppliers. Uh, please do view this. You know, it's kind of promoting those companies and their technologies and their services. Uh, let me show you the video. You can now actually this whole video is a PowerPoint, but it's you can download as a handout as well. You can go to the handout panel on the you know in the in your in the go to webinar panel. You see the rubber industry buyer guide. You can download the PDF. Yeah, you know, whatever you see on this video. Okay, let me show you the video. This is one way to introduce the companies okay who are interested to you know, publicize their companies to the audience okay this is the one way uh, we call it a rubber industry buyer guide
that's the rubber industry buyer guide uh, this is a short video with all the technology suppliers and the buyers as sellers of the products and services uh, it's a marketing you know program for the companies who want to advertise themselves or brand com their companies to the audience as you know this whole program is gets recorded and it will be available on youtube a lot of people are viewing this program on every week uh, it's a good opportunity to introduce your company to the rubber industry I'd like to introduce about this program, Executive Diploma Program um, of the Technobis, Executive Diploma 360 degrees, uh, focusing on the rubber industry, technology and management. It is a three month long diploma program focused on the non tire rubber industry. It's not included for the rubber industry. I encourage every industry to participate, nominate your team to join. Even they are working in the company currently, they can also join the same time working as well as studying this uh, diploma program. Very unique program. I believe it's very unique. I don't want to say the only one, but it's pretty unique. Okay, let's uh, have a look at this video about the Executive Diploma 360 degrees. Even if you're experienced or well experienced or little experienced, you can join this program, but you must have little experience in, in the rubber processing. So that's the about the you know the, the program uh, the executive diploma 360 degrees. I do suggest uh, you know all the industries to consider this program to nominate your team members. Okay, that's uh, one of the unique of this uh, today's uh, session is the rubber industry tips and tricks. Okay, in this what is idea about this? You know, we, we invite uh, experts who are well experienced in rubber processing. 
they will be sharing some of the ideas uh, so that can be utilized you know to improve a process or solve your problem so this is a session part of the rubber industry news hour tips and tricks today we have our expert mr prana bhattacharya as i mentioned to you before he has um, close to 30 years of experience in the rubber processing well experienced as a rubber technologist he has experience in the compounding and also the rubber to metal bonded components so we will experience he is be giving a, a tips on the epdm rubber compounding let's welcome uh, mr prana bhattacharya mr bhattacharya please come forward Thank you, Pera. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today, uh, in this session, I will uh, talk about uh, some guidelines or tips and tricks on the EPDM compounding. So, uh, my first uh, tips uh, on the uh, mixing of the EPDM uh, compound and uh, their uh, reduction of black scorch on EPDM compound. What is the uh, uh, tips number one is the reduction of black scorch on epidium compound. What is black scorch? Epidium compound, when mixed inside intermixing mixture, several power peaks are obtained during the mixing cycle. Those power peaks are associated with the change in the viscosity of the compound during mixing. When the carbon black is added, viscosity of the compound increases. When the oil is added, viscosity of the compound decreases. At the end of the mixing cycle of the compound, viscosity starts to increase steadily. And there is a steady increase in the power demand of the mixture. And a separate power peak is observed. In further processing, scorched particles and surface defects can be found. This phenomenon is called is black scorch. To get black scorch, no curatives, but only epidium and carbon black are necessary. This effect is more pronounced if we use high END content, high unsaturation content, and high structure carbon black rubber, uh, carbon black compound. What happens? It seems that the bonding between the reactive surface of the carbon black and some reactive ends of the polymer is responsible for this phenomena. These quartz like particles produce on the surface and scourges surface defects, rough surface observed in the final product containing scorch like particles. This is the black scorch. What is the solution of this? To avoid this, it is advisable to add 0.2 pH of sulfur prior to addition of carbon black in mixing chamber. So if we add 0.2 pH of sulfur, prior addition of carbon black in mixing chamber, then there will be a significant reduction in black scorch and a smooth surface finish can be obtained in the product. So this is the tips number one regarding the mixings of the epidium rubber compound. Now I'll come to the next tips, tips number two. This tip number two is the syndactic use of syndactic tip one to polybutadiene, grade name RB820, as the most effective coagent for paroxysmic uripidium rubber. We know that the peroxide curing system is used to reduce compression set and to improve heat aging properties of the epidium compound. Predominantly, these are the two reasons we use the peroxide cure system in the EPDM compound. But there are some disadvantages in peroxide system compared to sulfur cure systems. And those are 
if we use the peroxide system we found that the compound is a little bit more scorchy second the rate of cure is relatively low third it gives little lower modulus considerably lower modulus and finally it often produces a very sticky surface on the final product why the stickiness is of that because during the reactions of the polymerizations simultaneously there is another reaction happening that is depolymerization by the reaction of excess peroxide along with the epidm epidm uh, rubber so this depolymerization reaction causes this type of surface defect uh, 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 this problem of uh, 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 stickiness on the surface of the rubber so often we add coagent to reduce this surface defect and we expect that the coagent will acts or help in improving the cure rate we expect this should help in increasing the modulus they should also help in increasing the scorch time and finally they must take out the extra amount of the peroxide system from the medium and thereby reducing the chances of depolymerization reaction of the epidm rubber but in practice we use type 1 and type 2 conventional coagents of low molecular weight what happens these low molecular weight coagents are often very reactive they do form free radicals but they are very reactive and those very reactive free radicals instead of linking with the peroxy system or the rubber system the cross link among themselves if the cross link among themselves they really cannot appreciably neither increase the cure rate nor increase the scorch uh, time or the modulus also not effectively increased and finally stickiness on the surface remains so up to a certain level of the agent of the coagent we really do not get the benefit of the conventional coagent which forms free radical and those free radical are not very stable kind of free radical but on the other hand japan synthetic rubber corporation said made one special chemical syndiotactic one to polybutadiene syndiotactic one to polybutadiene rubber that is called synthetic uh, polybutadiene rubber made by jsr corporation and one grade is rb820 is available in the market which produces the free radical those are resonance stable that is the difference between the other uh, coagen and this coagen this coagen the free radical is resonance stable if this is the resonance stable then it, instead of copolymerization among themselves it reacts with the peroxides and also it reacts with the polymer chain giving the desired cross linking reactions it has high molecular weight and it can vulcanize along with the rubber it does not cross link within themselves compared to other coagents as a result what we get it improves cure rate it improves scorch safety it helps also in reducing the stickiness of the compound because it removes the excess peroxide from the system thereby reducing the depolymerization reaction so use of syndiotactic one to polybutadiene as a coagent can effectively help various purposes as a coagent of the peroxide cure epidm rubber Con compared to conventional coagent those are commercially available my third tips is again on peroxide based uh, compounding on epidm rubber that i'll talk about now that is the reduction of compression set in presence of calcium oxide in epidm formulation well we know that depending upon the climate and the weather conditions many a time rubber compound especially epidm rubber compound and if those are filled with silica filler 
then they absorb some moisture and due to this absorption of moisture there is a possibility that the moisture will come out during the process of the vulcanization of the curing and it actually really happens once the moisture is entrapped inside the medium during the vulcanization reaction of high temperature it will come out from the surface as water molecules or water vapor and what will be the result the result will be the pin hole or air lock permeations on the compound and the surface will be defective a defective surface with the air lock or pin hole generation surface will be produced if the moisture is absorbed during the compounding of the epidermal rubber so we need to eliminate the moisture from the system and this is widely used the practice that calcium oxide is used as a desiccant to remove the moisture from the medium calcium oxide absorbs the moisture and helps in producing surface defect free products surface becomes very smooth because there is no moisture inside the medium it has been absorbed with the calcium oxide calcium oxide is formed calcium hydroxide and there is no moisture in the medium there is no possibility to come out from the system however in presence of calcium oxide the other physical properties especially the compression state of the compound increases drastically why because calcium oxide is a basic compound it disturbs the overall cross-linking process and the network structure which are susceptible which are necessary to give a good cross-linking are not truly formed if the calcium oxide level is higher and it remains inside the medium but if we can reduce this basic behavior of the calcium oxide and then generate some sorts of other compound then the compression set can be maintained on the near normal level one mechanistic way is to form calcium chloride so that the salt will not adverse effect on the vulcanization curing systems or the cure rate and we will get a effective cross linking that will give good compression set properties accordingly the chemicals have been derived one such chemical is the birch set here produced by the birch chemicals uk when we add these chemicals along with the calcium oxide then the compression set can be maintained to the near normal level so these are the three steps uh, tricks or tips today from my side in news or channel in future we will give uh, please uh, uh, view more and more this news or channel for more and more tips by the various people thank you thank you very much Yeah, thank you, Mr. You? Thank you, Mr. Bhattacharya. Thank you very much for the, contributing the uh, tips for the EPDM uh, rubber compounding. Guys, I'm hoping that you find it very useful, these tips. As uh, Mr. Pranag has mentioned, that uh, keep watching. We will kind of bring various tips uh, on a regular basis uh, every week with the various experts. Um, of course, Mr. Pranav will be also joining in the future editions as well. Thank you, Mr. Pranav, once again. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, I repeat uh, the. I encourage you all of you to be subscribing this, uh, you know, um, uh, WhatsApp uh, group. You know, please again, I repeat this one because uh, if you wanted to get the links on a regular basis, this is the best way to get connected um, with our uh, programs. So please uh, feel free to scan the QR code and join the WhatsApp group. Okay. So this program, um, new server will be. This is recorded. It's getting recorded now, and it will be available in our technology channel and YouTube. Uh, so please watch this uh, program again if you would like to get more details in details. I think it's you know 
you may expecting some kind of presentation, but uh, it's not possible. But uh, you can watch this uh, whole program again in our YouTube channel because probably I will upload in a few hours time. Okay, that's the end of the, the session today. I'm hoping that you find it useful. You can always contact me. This is my contact information. I believe that most of you have my contact information. Uh, please WhatsApp me or email me. It's appropriate. I will address them. Okay. I will see you in the next edition. Okay, see you next week on Monday. Thank you all for joining this session today. Bye-bye for now.